Hello guys, Mark Martin here, also known as Full Moon Drummer on YouTube and uh, UK guy in USA on the International Scale Modelers Forum. Um, just doing a quick box inbox review of my next build. I've not done much for the last two and a half weeks. I lost my mojo, baby. And um, <clears throat> so I've got this box out. I'm going to open it up, take a look at what's inside and see if this helps me get my mojo back. So here we go. It's the Azigawa Orca Typhoon Mark 1B with the uh, that cockpit door styly one, not the bubble top. So uh, this is the one I'm going to enter for the International Scale Modelers D-Day group build. Um, so let's stop, let's take the lid off, see what we've got inside. Okay, so there's a bag with a clear sprue. It's got two canopies there, one that's cut open to allow you to have the open door and the open uh, roof canopy. Or you can have it in the solid style. Oh, if you can see that, let's take them out. All right, that way we can see that. Let's shift these out of the way so we don't have any glare on the background. Well, there you go, there's the one I'm going to be using, the canopy with the cutout to use the door and the, the uh, glass top that can be posed upwards. Um, and then these are the lights on the leading edge of the wings and these are the wingtip lights just here as well. So uh, looking at those parts canopy I'm using. I'm not seeing any marks on that. It looks pretty crystal clear to me. So I'm good with that. And there's a little rubber sprue in here with some what look like spacers or bushings of some kind. So I'm not sure what we're going to do with those until I see the instructions. Those back in the bag. Don't want to get those scratched up. Put those aside. I'm going to start with the instructions and the decals. So here we go. There's the decals. Two squadron types that we can do. There's also a decal for the um, instrument panel. These are decals for the stripes that go on the underside of the wings that was to uh, so that ground crew people on the ground could recognize that it was a British fighter typhoon not mix it up with maybe the Fort Wolf 19er um, and then it's got common roundels for both of those uh, squadron markings the, the end of tail duck egg green stripe, I'll uh, airbrush that and I'll also airbrush the white band with the black stripes on the underside. I won't use the decals, I'll mask everything and do, a, do my own paint job for that. So that's the decals, they look nice, they look pretty thin to me and they're matte, they're not shiny glossy like the old decals that we used to get. So they look pretty good, so I'm happy with the look of those. Alright, instruction booklet. Gives you a brief history of the uh, of the type of typhoon it is, what squadron it was used in, blah blah blah. Let's open her up. We have 12, 12 separate assembly instructions. 
starting off with a cockpit as usual and the two fuselage halves in number two and the wing assemblies number three number four attaching the wings to the fuselage and the stabilizers number five moves on to the undercarriage the uh, the wheel assemblies and uh, number seven moves on to the lights and some undercarriage flaps the rear wheel number eight is assembling the two bombs the underside bombs assembling the wheels for number nine and then number ten is assembling the bombs to the pylons and then to the underside of the wings along with the barrel fairings that attach to complete the four cannons two on each wings and then the last but one assembly is the propeller putting that together number 11 and then number 12 the final assembler putting the um, exhaust in the, uh, the propeller onto the front of the engine cowling and attaching the cockpit window and door looks fairly simple I don't see anything difficult with that so shouldn't take too long actually it looks pretty simple instructions are showing all the different sprues there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven wow eleven sprues plus the wings twelve wow that's a lot one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen thirteen wow that's a lot of material all right paint guide paint colors one three four eight fifteen I don't know what it's referring to it just says number one white number three red number four yellow eight silver so they're not umbro colors or other colors that I recognize uh, the the numbers aren't so I'll just use what I know to use for RAF standard colors the internal cockpit green interior green the earth uh, the uh, upper green, upper grey and in the lower lighter greys and now all those colours so I'll just be using the standard camouflage stuff used on British fighters of that time here's the painting and decal instructions black and white nice if it was in colour like Airfix do um, this is the first time I've uh, made an Azigawa kit so this is all new to me so bear with me while I just work out what these numbers mean. All right, okay. So decals are in the white balloons and then the black rectangles are the colors. So 307, down here it says 307, 90% of 307 and 10% of 15. Oh shit, that's gotta be wrong. Oh, there we go, that's for the upper dark gray. For the lower grey it's just 30C7 medium C grey. I'm going to use the three Tamiya colours that I showed in the last video. Tamiya XF81, 82, 83 for the cam RAF camouflage in the, these three tones. Um, and again as I said all these stripes underneath the wings. I'll be airbrushing those, I won't use the decals. And I won't use the decal for the uh, duckhead green stripe around the tail there around the fuselage at the tail end so that looks pretty straightforward nothing there scaring me so let's get on to looking at the parts and see how good these are All right, let's carefully take these out. So there's one sprue. It's got the propeller and spinner. That's a large propeller, wow. For a 148 scale, that's gotta be the largest propeller on any of the 148 I've ever made. Um, next one, it's like the back of the seat or somewhere in that region. 
Aerial. Um, I don't know what that piece is, number two, but I'll find out when I make it. But the parts look pretty nice. I'm not seeing any flash around the part lines on these parts. Look really clean. No parting line mismatch. It all looks very flush. Which is good news. That is the third sprue. Looks like the uh, cannon fairings. They look like the cannons inside those fairings. And then this looks like probably some wheel details. And they obviously look like the exhaust. And then we've got two halves of a one wheel. And we've got some little bits here. I'm not sure what they are. But we'll find out. But again, these parts look really crisp. Nicely detailed. No flash. I'm not seeing any jet pin stress marks on these seam faces. Panel lines are nice and crisp. Nicely recessed. I'm not sure if the actual um, aircraft had bold tyres, but these are bold, no tread. I assume they're going to be bold. So that one looks good. Move on to the next. There's the starboard side of the fuselage. Again, this looks very crisp, very nice panel lines on there. Some rivet details towards the engine cowlings. They look great. I don't know whether they're visible on the camera. Those uh, panel lines look great. And again, I'm not seeing any flash around these shutout features where there'd be cores shutting off from one from the A side of the mold to the B side. No flash. No flash on these shutouts for these features. It all looks clean. I don't know the age of this mold. Let's have a look, see if it gives me a clue in the instructions. Nope. No. Here we go. 1998. So for a mold from 1998, there must have been some uh, reconditioning on that mold. Because this... These parts are really crisp. Unless it was made from very hard and steel. Uh, like an A1 steel or a S7 steel through hardened. And then probably nitrided, treated, chrome plated maybe to give it lots of wear resistance. Ah, oh, rear wheel. There's just a little bit of mismatch on that part line there, so I will have to clean that wheel up, get a smooth surface on that tyre. But overall, another sprue there, number four sprue looks great. Yeah, again, these all look good. I'm not seeing any problems at all so far. There's the bombs. Yep, yeah, everything looks good. Bottom wing of the wing assembler. It's got wheel wells, some details in there, which is nice to see. Um, it's got pre-drilled holes, well pre-formed holes in here for the bombs but looks like there's a set there for four rockets on each wing which we don't get with this kit which is disappointing so that's one thing I've just spotted that I'm not happy with it doesn't come with rockets, just two bombs so if you guys know of any aftermarket rocket kits for the Orca Typhoon 148 scale Please leave a note on this video on YouTube because I'm going to want those. I want to put rockets on it. I want to arm it to the teeth. It's going to go off tank busting. 
I can't have a typhoon going into some D-Day invasion without rockets. But overall, everything looks great, and uh, I think we're going to be happy with this build. I'm looking forward to doing it. So just a quick one, just a short review there for you guys. And uh, I'm going to sign out now. And don't forget, give me a give me a note if you know of any aftermarket products for this. Maybe an engine, the rockets, and any etched stuff for the interior of the cockpit. I'm not seeing a pilot even. No pilot. Whoa. How many screws? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I only have 9, 10, 11, 12 sprues, so there's one sprue missing. And there's no pilot. Is there a pilot in the instructions? No. So we don't get a pilot with this one. Alright, panic over. That's it from me guys. Take care, happy modelling, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.